I don't hate it. I'm like I'm. I, I wanted it. I thought I was gonna make fun of it. I don't. I don't hate it. Why don't I hate it? I should hate it. I should hate it. But I. But I don't. You know. I kind of like it. If you do not know, Beyonce dropped her album, Cowboy Carter, and I have some commentary. Without further ado, let's get into this album review. Ooh, that was a bar. I wasn't even expecting that to rhyme. The album starts off with American Requiem. I think this was a beautiful opener for her album. Beyonce is the queen of harmonies, okay? If if it was one thing she gonna do, she gonna harmonize. This opener really sets the tone for the entire album. She addresses the haters that said she couldn't do a country song. The ones who are just like, you're black, stay in the hip hop section, stay in the R&B section, know your place. She really put them on blast right at the beginning of the album. They said she was too country and then now she's not country enough to do a country album which is ridiculous to me anybody can do any genre that they want to do it's not like black people are tied to r&b and hip-hop that's all we can do there's no other category for us black people can do whatever genre they want to do same way eminem can do a rap album there is no genre that is specifically for a specific race if you're an artist you can create more than just one type of art it's sucks that society just wants to pigeonhole black people into one or two categories. It's like, oh, you you can't do pop music, Doja Cat. You can't do pop music. That's clearly R&B and hip hop. And I mean, we saw this with Lil Nas X. He tried to do a country song. Actually, he didn't try to do a country song. He did. They didn't recognize it until Billy Ray Cyrus hopped on the track. Beyonce says she wants to do a country album, is doing a country album. And everyone's like, you can't do country. Okay, they're like, you cannot do country stick to the R&Bs and the hip hops. That's where you belong. Know your place, little black girl. That is essentially what they were trying to say. Beyonce wasn't having it, (laughs) okay? That's the overall theme of the entire album. Challenging the notion that black people cannot do country music, even though I've heard Negro spirituals that literally sound like modern day country music. I'm not even gonna lie. I I saw this like years ago. Just saying that we invented something doesn't have to be some kind of like negative state it could just be a fact and a fact it is <laughs> i love that she's showing love to america in the song because a lot of times people think that black americans hate america it's like this is our home you know why are we the only group that is supposed to hate our home the moment we show love to america it's like we're we're somehow self-hating i can be critical of my home and still love it i love that beyonce challenges that notion not only with the cover art showing the american flag but then also the opening song showing how homage to her home. Now the song Blackbird is undeniably a country song. If anyone tries to tell you different, they're hating. Very clearly, this is a country banger. I love the little heel clicking, heel tapping in the background. I think that is a a very nice element to add to the song. It sounds like there's someone else singing in there, but there's no one else tagged in the song like as a feature. So I'm wondering whose voice that is. Let me know in the comments because I just, I couldn't put my finger on who that sounded like. I just, I love the way she layers her voice to create these beautiful, beautiful melodic moments in her songs. Also, this one is more short and sweet. Now she has several songs on this album that are very like to the point, cut short, where I'm just like, I'm gonna need you to extend that another two minutes. Like sis, please extend the songs just a little bit more. Give me like a little minute and a half longer of the song. And this is one of them. I wish the song was a little bit longer, but you know, you get what you get and be happy with what you got. Whoever is on the team for this album needs a raise. It's just a beautiful blend of Beyonce's style of singing with typical structures and sounds that you would get from country music. Now, 16 Carriages was one of the songs that Beyonce released first when she said she was doing a country album. This song is beautiful, absolutely stunning. It's a wonderful blend of R&B and country music. The instrumental itself is amazing. She got some like really good moments in the song. Underpaid and overwhelmed, um, I believe most Americans can relate to that. I love this bar that she has in there. There's just, it's so freaking, mm. I might cook clean, but I still won't fold, bruh. The song has really good builds. 
lot of her songs on this album have amazing build. 16 Carriages is just, it's head not approved, okay? Where you can just sit back, you know, and just get your head not on. I'm glad that she released it along with Texas Hold'em. I think it's a good balance, like one upbeat song and then one that's a little bit more of a ballad. I think it was a great balance to release both of those songs at the same time. The next song on the album is called Protector and Y'all. When I heard this song, I fell in love. Honestly, I wanna learn the lyrics so I could sing it to Bella because I do wanna be her protector. It's just, it's a lovely, lovely lullaby. And I love that Beyonce put her her child on the track. Having Lil Rumi on the track, get that baby a Grammy. Get her some residual income before she's even old enough to know what that is. I just, I'm all for Beyonce putting her children on her songs. Give those babies some residual income that they will always have for the rest of their life. It's one of those songs that I think will be timeless. You're gonna shine on your own. I'm still gonna be your projector. If that is not motherhood summed up, I don't know what is. There's a long line of hands carrying your name. These lyrics literally reach into my soul and grab them because that is just, it's just so beautiful. Every single line in the song is just absolutely beautiful. We'll definitely learn it just so I can sing it to little Bella when she's, you know, nodding off to sleep so she knows her mother is gonna protect her. Lil Rumi's voice is so cute. I just, the little baby voices be getting me. Every time you have little baby voices in the songs, it just be so freaking cute to me. I absolutely love when they got the little baby voices in the song. It's just it's so adorable. Those harmonies at the beginning of My Rose are so beautiful. The way she opens it up, it's just like the heavens just singing down. Like it's just so beautiful and angelic sounding. This is another Bella approved song. I'm gonna learn the song as well and sing it to Baby Bella because this is just so beautiful and it's perfect. It's a perfect little lullaby and it's nice and short and sweet. <laughs> When I heard that part, it just, it just, it did something to me. I felt my soul leave my body and then come right back. I just wish it was longer. I'm not gonna lie. I wish it was a little bit longer because it's just so beautiful. Throughout the album, you have country legends coming on to tell y'all this album is that girl. You have Willie Nelson, well-known country superstar legend coming on to tell you that Beyonce made a country album and it's country and y'all gonna accept it as country. I feel some type of way about this. While I do appreciate that there are legends out there and they come on there and they, you know, co-sign Beyonce doing a country album. What I don't like is that we feel like we have to have their co-sign for it to be what it is. It's giving that Lil Nas X Old Town Road ain't a country song until Billy Ray Cyrus hops on the track. And it's nothing against those artists, you know? I know that they're just showing Beyonce love and I'm here for it. At the same time, Beyonce does not need Willie Nelson to tell her that she's welcome to do country. She doesn't need that cosign for it to be a country album. His little bit is fun. I think he's hilarious. He was like, y'all know who I am. I don't need to know who you are. <laughs> Just like, Oof. okay, he's sassy. <laughs> you know, his bit was fun. I loved his bit, but it just reinforces that, that need to be accepted and that need to be, what's the word I'm looking for? Validated. That needs to be validated by other races of people whenever we want to step outside of the, the box. Okay, whenever we want to step outside of the box that we've been placed into, we need to be validated by other races of people. And I just, I reject that notion 100%. I'm not here for us needing approval to do what we freaking want to do. But his little bit was nice. I, nothing, nothing against it. I think it was, it was a cool little thing to have in there. I just wish that the other racial aspects were not part of it because it kind of takes me out of it when I see that. I, I can't appreciate it for what it is because I'm reminded like, oh yeah, she needs to have have a Willie Nelson for it to be accepted as a country album. Like, no, the F she doesn't. The next song is Texas Hold'em. We already know that song's a bop. It goes hard. It has all the country elements in it. She sings very beautifully in it. The lyrics are fun. And I liked it when it first came out. And I'm not a country connoisseur. I'm not really that into country. There's only like a few country songs that I like. Like for example, Devil Went Down to Georgia. These hills were made for walking. Like that's pretty much the scope of how much country music I personally enjoy. Well, I do like bluegrass, okay? I do like bluegrass. Like if it's playing at a restaurant, I love a good bluegrass vibe. As far as like being like into country and listening to it all the time, it's just, it's not my stilo. But this song was really good. She did it so well that this person that doesn't really 
with country like that was into it. I was feeling it. I liked it. Anyone hating on that song is just a hater. I'm sorry. You're a hater. The song Bodyguard is absolute vibes. That song is literally perfect for cruising with the windows down on a nice summer day with a beautiful breeze. It's one of the songs that stood out to me when I listened to the album for the first time. I love the country aspects. I love the R&B aspects. I think they just blend beautifully together. This song is perfect for the summer. I'm glad she dropped this album when she did because this is gonna be beautiful to listen to on a nice summer day with the windows down cruising on the highway, okay? This is a cruising on the highway song. It's also giving 70s, okay? It's got like a 70s kind of kind of vibe to it, which I absolutely love. I love that 70s nod. When she said, uh, turn around and John Wayne that, I was like, you go, sis. I think that that line, that bar, was the bar of the whole album. I'm sorry. <laughs> I had to rewind it several times when I heard her say that, because I was just like, I know she did not just say, turn around and John Wayne that ass. That bar did it for me. The next interlude, you had Dolly Parton coming on and showing Beyonce love. And now this is one thing that I will say about Dolly Parton is that she is not a hater, okay? When Whitney Houston redid her song, she did not hate on Whitney Houston's version of I Will Always Love You. She showed Whitney love and now she's showing Beyonce love while Beyonce is doing a cover of her hit song Jolene. The actual cover is amazing. One thing that I absolutely loved about the cover is that it maintained the integrity of the song, but it also was different enough where you can't compare the two versions. Like if you listen to the original of Jolene, it's very vulnerable. She's begging her not to take her man. Whereas Beyonce was like, girl, you can try if you want to, but you ain't taking shit. Dolly Parton was more insecure in her version. Beyonce is coming from a place of confidence. <laughs> you might think you that girl, but compared to me and compared to the relationship that I have, you, you ain't ish. It maintained the integrity of the original song while also adding Beyonce's flair without bastardizing the song. Cause that's what a lot of artists that have made classic songs don't want. They don't want their song to be bastardized. Like for instance, Tracy Chapman, there's a lot of controversy around people wanting to sample fast car and she doesn't want her song bastardized and I understand that I understand that you want your song to keep its integrity you don't want it to be associated with no foolishness because that's your baby if that's your song that's your baby honestly both songs are absolutely amazing and this was probably the song I listened to the most <laughs> outside of like Texas Hold'em when I was listening to this song I kind of rewinded it several times and it was a vibe every single time I rewinded it <laughs> There is no denying that this is a country song. If you try to deny it, you're a hater. People are just gonna have to deal with it. It has all the elements that would make it a country song. One of the things I kind of noticed about this entire album is that Beyonce letting y'all know she got hands. I don't know, these lyrics got me got me thinking Beyonce out here molly whopping. The song Daughter, not one of my favorites. I'm gonna be honest. It's just a little creepy to me. It's very, very haunting. Just, just the way she's doing the harmonies and just the, the instrumental, it's just, it's a little creepy to me. It's just, it's just not my CeeLo. I can still appreciate the beautiful harmonies that she has in the song. I do like that she does sing in other languages, which I think is really unique. I think that's Spanish, but I'm not 100% sure. And this wouldn't be the first time she's sung in Spanish. I remember my Spanish teacher, she used to play um, If I Were a Boy in Spanish all the time. Like that was her jam. Si yo fuera un chico. She used to play that all the time for us. And and I don't know if that was like her way of trying to get us to be interested in Spanish or not. She's masterful at singing in other languages. I love that bar where it's like, I don't do fellowships with fake ones. Bruh, I feel you, my good sis. I don't either. And I understand why you don't. 
Now the next song is Spaghetti. This is like just Beyonce going crazy with the rapping. I was not expecting Beyonce to go so hard on track. Did she write those bars? I don't know. I highly doubt it, but she performed them very well. I ain't in no gang, but I got shooters and I bang. That was a hit. You know, it was a hit. It was very short though. That's the main critique that I saw people giving that song was that it was just too short. The instrumental for the song is absolutely amazing. Again, queen of harmonies. Those harmonies in the song were absolutely amazing. And you cannot deny the country elements in the song, period. Now the Just For Fun song is, it's nice. Not my favorite though. I don't know the gentleman that was on the song. Willie, what's his name? Willie Jones, okay? I don't know who Willie Jones is. He sounds really nice. It sounded good, but it just wasn't my favorite. It wasn't memorable to me. When I was going back through and thinking about the songs that I liked the most, it just wasn't that memorable to me. That just might be a me thing. Now Two Most Wanted featuring Miley Cyrus. Again, not my favorite. And it's not because of anything Beyonce did. I just don't like Miley Cyrus's voice. I think she sounds very monotone. I, I just, I don't really care for her music. I would have liked the song a lot better if it was just Beyonce on the track, okay? I'm just keeping it a buck. I'm not trying to be a hater. I would have liked the song better if Miley Cyrus was not on it. This hair is not giving Renaissance, okay? It's not giving Cowboy Carter. So we're gonna put on this platinum wig so that we, you know, get that discount Beyonce vibe going. Slam the wig off. I'm gonna put this one on and see, see what she working with. I'm not a wig person, okay? Uh, the little headband wig is like beginner wig. When it comes to wigs like this, I'm not particularly well versed in it. So if it looked jacked up, I'm trying my best. <laughs> Don't come for me. Let me live in peace with my jacked up wig if it's jacked up. Why is it giving Khaleesi? <laughs> it's giving Khaleesi vibes, bruh. Let me see, I'm trying to hook it in the back. I don't even know if that's what you're supposed to do. I don't know. I've never seen myself with hair this bright before. This is weird. I don't know if I like this. <laughs> The next song is Levi Jeans. It has Post Malone on it. Post Malone sounds really good on this song. Just his voice goes so well with Beyonce's in this particular song. I'm not the biggest Post Malone fan. There's something about him that just irks me a little bit, but he does sound really good on this song. I think the song is beautiful. The way they sing together, just it works. It just works for me. I don't know why. Levi Jeans was a really good song. It's one of the ones that I like the most. It's just, it's smooth. It's got vibes. I love that it is over over a very standard country beat. You cannot deny that this is a country song, a country duet. This is the best singing I've heard from Post Malone. I think it was a beautiful ballad. Like I said, it's one of my favorites off of the album. This outfit really isn't giving Beyonce, okay? So I need to change into something a little bit more Beyonce in her Cowboy Carter era. This is a little bit more Beyonce on a budget. In her Cowboy Carter era, this wig is shedding so badly. I should have invested in a more higher quality wig. I think I paid like $30 for this one. We're almost there. Okay, we're almost there. We're just missing a hat of, now which way is this supposed to go on? I can't tell. Is it like the same both sides? I don't know. Okay, yeah, that's a look. Don't say anything about the hat not fitting on my big old head. Okay, that's not my fault. I need a custom hat because this hat is too small for my big old noggin. Is it is it giving discount Beyonce? Hopefully it is. Hopefully it's giving discount Beyonce. That's what we're going for. Cause we know we can't be the real thing. So we're going for, for discount Beyonce, okay? This wig keeps covering my face and I don't like it. Um, has been telling me to settle right on down. She is the queen of harmonies. There are so many beautiful harmonies in this song. I just wish it was longer. That's my overall critique for this album is that certain songs I wish were much, much longer than they were. Okay, give me more song, Beyonce. Don't, don't tease me. Don't tease me with these beautiful harmonies and then just cut it to the next song. No, give me three, four minutes. At minimum, give me three minutes. Is that too much to ask for a three minute song? But Flamenco was another one of those songs that was really short and sweet, but I would 
preferred that it was longer because it was just so beautiful. Then she had another interlude and this was the Linda Martell show reiterating that point that music stretches beyond just one singular genre. You can have a song that has hip hop and rock. For example, you had Linkin Park and Jay-Z when they teamed up. I think it was a whole entire album that they did together. And it was a blend of rock and hip hop. There was nothing wrong with that. Music can stretch along different genres within the same song by incorporating different elements. Anyone who thinks otherwise, they're not really into art. When you think about different artists, sometimes they'll take things from surrealism. Sometimes they'll take things from abstract, different disciplines, and then build them together and make something so beautiful and unique. Anyone that is criticizing her for incorporating R&B, hip hop vibes into the country music is not a lover of the art. Because if you love the art of music, you're gonna be able to at least appreciate the blending of genres. This interlude, I think, really reiterates that point that I think Beyonce is making in this album as a whole. Once I heard the beat drop, I was like, okay, this is a Boots Were Made For Walking sample. I was like, oh, okay, okay, Beyonce. I knew you had to put that Boots Were Made For Walking, just a knot to that song, at least somewhere in the album. Cause that song, like I said, that was one of the country songs that I actually do like. So I really enjoyed hearing that sample in the song, Ya Ya. Part of me wanted Yaya to be the opener. Like I get why American Requiem was the opening song, but the song Yaya could have been an opening for the album as well. I think that would have set the tone even more for me, but I still like Requiem as an opener. When she said my family lived and died in America, I was like, yes. The black American in me was like, absolutely. My ancestors lived on this land, built this land up, died on this land. We are a part of America, regardless of any anyone saying otherwise, Yaya gives 70s vibes. I just, I love the nod to, to older music throughout this album. That nod to the 70s, it's it for me. It was really nice to hear those elements in the song. It's just a fun song. Like these lyrics be getting me. If you ain't got no bridge, get the about the soul. Southern gal. I live in the South now, but I'm not even a Southern gal, but I mean, if you ain't got grits, I mean, you should get up out here. That song, Yaya, was very fun. Let's see, let's see. I told y'all, I got notes. The next interlude was Oh, Louisiana. The little mouse voice kind of threw me off. Was that Beyonce in mouse voice? Or was that somebody else? I couldn't, I wasn't quite sure, but I think that was kind of funny. It was like a funny little element. And if you watch the, the visuals that are on YouTube, she has like the little talking heads, which I think is so funny. <laughs> The instrumental is everything. That instrumental really pulled me in and had me in a chokehold. I loved the instrumental. Again, too short. I wanted more song. I'm like, Beyonce, stop teasing me. Okay, stop teasing me with a good song and then taking it away. I'm gonna need you to extend that another minute and a half. Stop doing this to us. Okay, stop doing this to us. It also had funk vibes to it, which I really loved. There were some really good funky kind of vibes in Desert Eagle and I was here for every bit of it. I think what she did in Riverdance was so amazing because it blended the country vibe with house. If you didn't know, Beyonce's original album, the first, the first album that came out before this was a house album. So I think it's pretty cool that in this album you had the country and she mixed in a little bit of that house vibe. And you really see that in the song Riverdance. No pain. I think that song was so much fun. Um, this is another cruising song, right? Like you on the road, on a highway, you got the windows down. It's a beautiful hot summer day with a little thing of iced tea in the cup holder. And you just, you just vibing with the person you love cruising down the road. Absolutely love that song. I think it's really chill. I love songs that have like a chill, chill vibe to it. Cause those are driving songs. Okay. Those are on the highway going somewhere or going nowhere songs. This one leans more R and B than it does country. I will say it obviously does have a few little hints of country in it, but it is more of an R&B song. And I love the little breaks in the song. Singing, I will carry on. And then the beat drops in again. I love that. And the instrumental is beautiful. The instrumentals on this album are actually really, really beautiful to me. Whoever composed these songs needs a raise, okay? They need a big old raise. One, two, three, four. 
When that beat drops, you just gotta go. You know what I mean? When you get a song and it's just so, mm. This is one of those songs that once that beat drops, your face gets screwed up like that because it is just so good. This is a beautiful blend of country and trap. This song is really good. One of my favorites. Yeah, when that beat drops, the song goes crazy. That beat drop is is everything. Now, I'm not sure if I'm hearing Dolly Parton actually singing, like harmonizing with Beyonce. I'm not 100% sure. Maybe she just said the opener and that was it. Part of me feels like I'm hearing Dolly Parton singing in the background with Beyonce. I'm not sure. I'm not sure. I need confirmation on that. Whoever is featured on the song isn't listed, so I'm not sure who the gentleman is that's rapping on the song. Booty corn fed? Bruh. <laughs> These lyrics are just hilarious to me. This also is another house meets country song, which I think is good. It makes the two albums cohesive. Mercy on me, baby, have mercy on me. And finally, you have Amen, which really ties back into American Requiem beautifully. It incorporates some of the lyrics from American Requiem into the final finale of the album. It's a great way to finish it, okay? I think that that was a very beautiful way to finish the album. Overall, this album is a bop. I'm not even gonna lie. I actually really, really like the album. I think Beyonce did a wonderful job with it. The country elements are strong. So any hater saying that it's not a country Country album can kick rocks. If you a hater, just say that. You don't have to go on this whole rant of how the album's not country, okay? Just say, I'm a hater. Raise your hand and say, I'm a hater, and then leave it at that. And we'll, we'll already be on the same page. Another thing, if you listen to the album on YouTube and you see like the, the visuals for it, I think the visuals are a vibe. The visuals are absolutely stunning. They just, they transport you somewhere while you're listening to the song. So the visuals work really well with the music. and I I think this whole album was masterfully done. In my humble opinion, this is Beyonce's best work since Lemonade. Lemonade was amazing, okay? Lemonade, the whole HBO special that went along with it, absolute masterpiece. I think this album is her next masterpiece. Now that's my personal opinion. If you don't like my opinion, that's fine. You can have your own opinion and it'll be yours, okay? It'll be yours, this one's mine. Let me know what y'all think in the comments. I will link the songs that I like the best in a playlist in the description. Also, I am hosting a giveaway right now and it's going on until April 4th. So if you're a subscriber, okay, of Faye Bay, go ahead and hit that description, fill out the Google Docs form and leave a comment on any of my videos between now and April 4th. And that is your way to be entered into the giveaway. Remember, you have to be 18 years or older and one submission per subscriber. Do not spam me with a bunch of the same person. Like, don't do that. You will be disqualified. I think this is a whole vibe. Now that we're at the end of the video, I'm sorry for the clickbait. I'm definitely gonna take this wig off as soon as I'm done filming because these little hairs in my face are just not it. Even though I think this is a whole look. If you like this content, you already know what to do. Like, share, comment, and definitely subscribe so that you can become a Faye Bay. And I will see y'all with the next one. Deuces.